simple but profound. Hey, Elliot, how can I, how can a man, not even I, I get you, Ali. <laughs> how can a man stop being a slave to his desires? Any tips would be appreciated. You know, one of the highest quality personal virtues, and it's not one that I always, it definitely wasn't one that I had. It's one I still struggle with. And for a long time, I didn't even recognize that it was a virtue. I was like, fuck that. Is self-control. Self-control, <laughs> right? Self-control is not sexy. Passionate whirlwinds are sexy. Doing what feels good is sexy. Indulging your senses is sexy. Self-control, boring, right? I remember thinking that as a kid. Elliot has no self-control, one of the things that like the teachers would say. And it made me like have animosity towards self-control. Teachers would say like, you know, tell my parents like, Elliot has no self-control. I still, you know, I inter somebody interviewed me the other day and they said, Elliot, you're so open about, you're so open about yourself, so open about things. Um, you, wear, you wear your heart on the sleeve. And I'm like, yeah. And someone with self-control probably wouldn't say half the things I say or do half the things I do. So in a way, you know, it's a double-edged sword. So the teachers would tell me, they'd tell my parents, this kid Elliot has no self-control because whatever came to my head comes out of my mouth, <laughs> right? And now I make a living doing that, right? Whatever comes to my head, comes to my mouth. I don't pre-record any of these. I'm not thinking about what I'm going to say to you guys. Whatever comes to my head, comes to my mouth. Sometimes it's inappropriate. The wrong shit comes out, right? So I've had to learn how to control that. If you ever meet me, you might, you might be a little shocked that I'm actually kind of quiet because <laughs> guess what? I'm old enough now to have self-control. People meet me all the time and, they, and they're like, wow, I expected you to talk more. I expected you to be more charismatic. And most of the time people meet me and I'm just, I'm quiet because I got self-control now, right? Just because I'm thinking it don't mean I got to say it. I don't have any, I don't feel the pressure to to fulfill all my impulses, right? Because you're asking me about desires. Desires are impulses. Self-control. You can practice self-control. You can practice self-control in one of two ways, a positive way and the negative way. And, and neg when I say negative, I don't mean bad way. I mean by saying no. You can practice self-control. And a lot of this, most of the time, we're thinking of it in terms of the positive, right? I spoke to, there's two, two examples I just gave you. One example, it was a positive with, uh, forgive me, I don't remember you guys' names after I answer your question, but the young man that was asking about what to do with his schedule and he's very busy and he's got his two daughters. Um, the positive self-control is get up earlier, do something, right? So now it's self-control. He's not going to uh, indulge in, the, in sleeping in, but more, more prominently, more importantly, he's going to get up. Get up. That's self-control. That is like, I'm controlling myself. I'm getting myself up. I'm going to get up. Right? That's self-control. But then there's also the negative self-control that I described in the last question. Elliot, I start all these projects and don't finish them. Stop starting projects. Stop. Say no. Say no, oh, an idea comes to me, just stop. You don't have to do anything. Just because an idea comes to you, because you describing desires, you're a slave to the desire, or, or man, a man is a slave to his desires. It's the same way that our friend that starts all those projects, he's a slave to his desire because it's that desire that makes, that it, he called it enthusiasm, but it's the desire to go do something. It's the desire to go create something. There's a desire there. And what I'm saying is, no. Just because the desire is there, because the enthusiasm is there, because the impulse is there, does not mean you do anything about it. In fact, you know, I think that's undervalued. I don't think enough people talk about that. I don't think enough people talk about stop doing shit, <laughs> right? It's all about what to do. What can I do? What should I do next? How do I do it? And what I'm saying is, 
Feel the impulse. Feel the impulse, feel the feeling, feel the emotion, let the idea come, but don't do anything about it, right? That, that, that's not sexy either, right? That's one of those that's not sexy. What do you mean, Elliot? Taking action sounds so sexy because you think that you, that you need to take action, but then it leads to being a slave to action, and it's the same thing you're talking about right here. So if you have a desire, it doesn't mean that you take action. That's how you stop being a slave to it, right? You're not a slave if you're not, if you, if you're not being driven around, right? What does a slave need? A driver. A slave needs a driver. And if you're not being driven around, you're not a slave. So you might have desires, but if it's not driving your actions, then you don't have a slave driver and you're not a slave. Notice the slave, notice the desire, right? Be it, uh, you know, desire for junk food, desire for sex, desire for smoking weed, whatever it is. Notice the desire, but then say no, right? No, nope, nope. And guess what? Guess what happens? When you say no, you get better at saying no. Practice saying no to things that you don't even need to say no to. And, and when I mean this, I mean mostly to yourself. Deny yourself. Christ says, deny yourself. You must deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. What does that mean? Deny yourself. That means just because I think it, just because I feel it, just because I want it, just because my will, just because my intellect, just because my sensation wants something doesn't mean that I need to go get it. That's being a slave to your base nature, to your lower nature. You got a lower nature. What's unique about man, right? You know, in our, in our egalitarian world where they try to lift animals up to the station as, of man, right? Like, like the whales are as important as man or like bumblebees are as important as man. Um, you know, what they fail to recognize is that all creation is has low station except man. Man is a higher nature too. His base nature, like the dogs and cats and the whales, right? And the bunnies, whatever it is. They're all, they all have lower natures, like a man's lower nature. To them, it's not a lower nature. It's their instinct. It's their nature. But a man has a higher nature, right? He's got intellect. He's got reason, right? Animals don't have no reason. You have reason. Use your reason. Be detached. Say no to what's expedient so that you can say yes to what's eternal. You see what I'm saying? Self-control. Self-control, Ali. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot Hulse here, and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation coaching students where among many things we get together about four or five hours a week where we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives in fitness business and with women and if you want to join a like-minded group of men that get together every day to grow stronger in every way during this degenerate age it's real simple just follow me on instagram and then dm me the word king k-i-n-g and then me or one of my teammates will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. I really hope to see you perhaps at our next live call. Done.